This is one very, very different trip to Fraser Island. We've got a cyclone just off the coast bearing down on us and 100 plus k an hour winds. The surf was up, the beaches were eroded, trees were down and we are getting chased off the island. We're stuck here right now in these huge swells trying to get through, but this isn't how it started. Let's go back and find out how we got ourselves in this mess. The start of our trip couldn't be more different, with the sun shining on a glorious Queensland afternoon. Sean and I have been burning the midnight oil, getting our trucks ready for this trip, so we're running a little late to meet some mates for a Fraser adventure. Mate, if I'd said to you last night in the workshop that we were going to make it onto the ferry today, what would you have said to me? I would have said you're absolutely dreaming. I didn't think for a second I was going to make it, but here I am and I'm stoked to be here. Got to say, mate, that truck of yours is looking, I'd say a million dollars, but I'm going to give it a million plus one. No, mate, cheers, a lot of hard work. And um, that D-Max, holy heck, that's a, that's a flash ride you got there, bud. Mate, I feel like I need a shower before I get in this thing every time. It's, uh, it really is, it's a work of art, mate. The back of it's just done up so nice. It's gonna be beautiful to travel out of this year, mate. I can't wait, mate. So here we are, the famous Inskip Point. This is where most people end up on Facebook pages when they get stuck around here. Because a lot of people do get stuck. I reckon we um, get right into it. Mate, I've just selected uh, the, four, the 4 H sign, uh, and uh, I don't wanna be on that Facebook page. So <laughs> let's get stuck into it, mate. The boys are already there, they're waiting for us. Leaving the mainland and taking the barge to Fraser Island, well, it's like stepping into another world. And it would be an understatement to say that we're excited as we wait for the ferry. Our good mate Costas runs this service regular as clockwork every day and soon has us disembarking on Fraser's southern beach. And just like that, we're back in paradise and set off to find the boys. Mate, I don't know if you can see past me, but that's a pretty iconic sight up there. There's five or six big rigs parked on the beach and a dingo walking around in front. We can only be one place, mate, Fraser Island. Look at that. Hey, those trucks look good, don't they? Mate, there are some weapons in that convoy. There are little dingoes down the front too. That's very cool. These must be the boys, eh? Righto, mate, I don't reckon we even stop. We've got a lot of ground to cover. I'll muscle these boys up and we'll get going. What do you say? Yeah, I'll flash the lights. Give them the signal. And here we go. Yep, the boys are on. Woo! We're out of here. Fraser Island. As good as it gets. Joining us for this adventure is one good looking lineup of rigs with a few rough heads thrown in for good measure. <laughs> First up is the dog himself. Our mate Stu from Wholesale Automatics, the resident expert in auto conversions. He of course is driving his usual weapon, a GU patrol set up for remote touring and tough adventures. Next up is Sam and Andy from Spares Box. These guys are the go-to for online purchasing of vehicle parts, and they put together a trick Prado in just a few days using parts from their catalogue. How cool is that? Then we've got Shane and Doug from Fulcrum Suspensions. Not only have they kitted out the D-Max with some Schmidt suspension for myself, but also their neat looking Hilux dual cab. Next in the convoy is Tim and Aiden from iDrive, makers of one of the smartest throttle controllers on the market. They'll be wheeling a Navara with a real sting in the tail thanks to their very own throttle controller. At the back of the convoy is one weapon of a 79, piloted by Darren of Custom RV Creations and one happy customer, Wim, and it's an absolutely mint 79 series set up specifically for remote touring. Now, of course, there's a good reason we're late and catching up with the boys. You see the paint is still drying on my D-Max, complete with, look, I've got livid lighting on here. I've got Dunham Watson drawers in the back for the first time in ages. I've even got a water tank. This thing is a weapon and it's kitted out for remote touring and tough tracks. After a heck of a lot of punishment on the tracks, Sean's finally given Sooty the 80 a facelift with a full body Raptor protective coating, not to mention straightening most of the panels. And hasn't it come up a treat? Looks absolutely smick, mate. Stu Dog, Mr. Dog, the copy back there, mate. Yeah, mate, copy. If uh, my sources are correct and I often are, this is your first time on Fraser Island. First time on Fraser Island. I don't let me in Queensland much when I'm here. Uh, dogs love the sand, mate. You're going to have a ball up here. I'm not a big fan of the humidity, but everything else is pretty spot on. I don't know why you're not a fan of the humidity, mate. You haven't got any hair to worry about. <laughs> hey, Sam, Andrew, I can't see you back there. You boys got a copy? Oh, it's hard to see anything past Stu's canopy, but yeah, we're back here. Hard to see anything past Stu, you're right. First time on Fraser or not? Uh, I have to uh, embarrassingly say, yeah, this is my first time actually in Queensland, uh, let alone Fraser, but yeah. Uh, don't worry, mate, you, you, can, you can get a shot when you get home and you'll get over it pretty quick. Now, it's a beautiful part of the world. I think you're going to love Fraser. 
Shane, you've been on Fraser before, haven't you? I have, numerous times. It's my billion that hasn't. As we get a bit further up north, we get these sort of humpty doos that uh, occur on the beach. And I reckon if you ever wanted to test out that suspension setup, this would be it, mate. Mine will be faster, so don't try and keep up, okay? Speaking of going fast, Tim, got a copy? I certainly do. I'm going to take a punt and suggest you haven't done Fraser before. I have never done Fraser before, but so far I'm loving it. Hasn't even started yet, mate. It hasn't even started. Daz, Wim, you boys would have been on Fraser before. I know Daz has. Yeah, I've, uh, I've done plenty times before. I'm not going to see it out of my toes, mate. It's still falling out. Um, <laughs> this is Wim's first uh, trip. Oh, well, not his first trip, but it's um, been quite a while since he's been over here. With a few days up our sleeves and a few fresh faces to the island, we're putting together a best of itinerary of places to visit. But speaking of losing the beach, we're in the midst of a strong spring tide and it's really starting to push in. So it's time for us to head off the beach and explore some of Fraser's amazing inland lakes. The island gets its fair share of water and it's not long before we're taking the clean edge off the four wheel drives. Heck, Clean cars of a city slickers anyway, boys. Let's get into it. There's few better ways to open the Fraser account than at one of the jewels of the island, Lake Mackenzie. Lake Mackenzie is one of the island's freshwater lakes and perhaps the most photographed and famous part of the entire island itself. It's a unique body of water because it is only filled through rainfall. There is no rivers or streams entering this lake. For us though, it's just the perfect location to cool off. Mate, Lake Mackenzie. Lake Mackenzie is fantastic. You know, a lot of people think it's serious four wheel driving, that's all you're doing around Fraser yep. Island. The sights around Fraser is just as exciting. Some of the sights around Lake Mackenzie, <laughs> I tell you what, get the blood flowing. Exactly. Folks, honestly though, even on a busy day, we've got a couple of tourist buses in, as you can see, it's quite crazy down through there, but this section here, look at the boys, they're having the a blast. Boys having a, a well-deserved bath. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm yeah. about to do the same, mate. You need to, bud. Oh no, all right. check me out. Can I get in, have a quick swim? Then we'll get going. How yeah, good no. is this place? Lake Mackenzie. Oh, I love this place. I do too. Oh, you're you're going to take day your, here. You're going to take your clothes off? No, walking. I'm walk in. <laughs> After a long night in the workshop, this has got to be the perfect way to freshen up. Unfortunately, we can't hang around here all day. There's plenty more to see. So soon, we're back on the road. Fraser Island is connected by a maze of inland sand tracks crisscrossing the island. They're usually pretty well driven, but there's still the occasional challenge to be had. It's a bit of a, a Juni Hill thing here. I don't think there's much in it, but you might want to get into it. This sand will be soft. Yeah, copy that, mate. The step up here. Up you get. Yep. Nicely done. Have a listen to that rigger, Sean. Goodness gracious, doesn't it sound good? That's soft, all right. You might get it softer. Now Stu is never one to hold back, <laughs> I don't think he's going to hear. Good drive, bud. Made that look yeah, easy. Ah, ah, giddy up. Let's go. This would have to be the perfect kind of track to really test out your suspension. So come on, boys. Show us what you got. Come on. Get up there. Get up there. You got this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. And speaking of testing, we wanted to test a throttle controller. Razor Island soft Feel sand. The power. Pretty good drawing board. Righto, Daz, unleash the big 79, mate. Let's see what she's got. With the day getting on, the tide should be on its way out. So we push back to the coast to cover some more ground north up the beach, where some of the island's bigger challenges await us. Hey, uh, Andy, you got a copy, mate? Yeah, Sean, go ahead, mate. 
Mate, I'm just admiring that Prado just behind me there in the convoy. You were telling me at camp the other day that you guys built that in a day and a half. Is that, that's right, isn't it? Correct. It was a pretty big feat, but I uh, got it done pretty happy with the, with the outcome. That's amazing. Obviously, what you built it so fast because you got all the parts at hand at spare box there. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, it seems to be busy building a, you know, one of the biggest ranges of one-stop shop, uh, online auto, auto parts store. So, yeah, everything from your servicing needs right through to everything you see on the Prado. Yeah, very interesting, mate. So, what, any, anyone can just jump on your website and, and order like, parts, modifications, accessories for their full driver? Yeah, exactly. Uh, you jump on the website, uh, put your car details in and tell you exactly what fits and uh, yeah, deliver to your door. Oh, how easy is that, mate? So if you break something on the weekend, just jump onto your website, get the new part, and you'll be back at it in no time at all. Exactly, we want to keep people on the road enjoying this. Well, mate, um, I want to grab your number a bit later because I'm the sort of bloke that uh, <laughs> will need to memorize that one. Right, no doubt, no doubt. Happy to help you out. In this perfect weather, it's really hard to believe the reports of a storm cell off the coast, but a telltale sign is the abundance of sea foam and the waves that are pushing way up the beach on what should be a low tide. It's with a lot of caution that we continue on, timing the gaps between the waves, as honestly there's nothing worse than a belly full of salt water over the top of your vehicle. It's not long before another Fraser iconic sight appears on the horizon. Well, that's a familiar sight, the wreck of the Mahino up here. The story of the Mahino, very quickly. The Mahino was built as a luxury passenger liner, which it did really well. It was used in the First World War as a hospital ship. And then, of course, afterwards, it commenced its regular duties. In 1935, it was decommissioned and it was sold to a Japanese ship wrecker. And it was whilst it was being towed to Japan that in heavy seas, probably much like we've got today, the tow line snapped and she washed up exactly where she is. Its war history continues because in World War II, poor old thing, if it hadn't been through enough, it was used as target practice by the RAAF and the uh, commando school that was actually based on the island. Today, as you're about to see, if what I can see is true, it is bombed in a completely different way. Photo bomb. If you had a dollar for every photo taken of the Mahino, you'd be able to afford a 79 series. I'm gonna go and throw a couple of photos at it myself. Out of the cars, it's obvious there's a big change in the air and the wind is really picking up. Mate, in conditions like this, what? I can see <laughs> exactly why the Mahino washed up. Yeah, exactly. Imagine being in that, in that, in those conditions. What I like about this though, we've timed it at exactly the perfect time. I mean, we came down to the phone party at the Mahino, yes. at Fraser Island. Do, 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 Unfortunately, do, do, do. we're the only ones here, but... <laughs> That's right, mate, let's get foamy anyway. <laughs> this is pretty cool, isn't never it? Never seen anything like it. Not like Incredible. this, not in these conditions. Nah. This is foam all over the beach, it's blowing a stiff 40 knots. Yep, I can just stand up. <laughs> I'm loving life. I always like to come here, stop. This is sort of yeah. Fraser Island, mate. The Mahino is Fraser Island. Dingo's the Mahino, Lake Mackenzie, Eli Creek. backpackers, and then you're done. All right, I'm gonna go get a closer look. What do you reckon, mate, we uh, get to camp or? Mate, if camp has got swag set up, beach out the front, and cold beer in hand, I vote camp. And soon enough, a perfect spot appears on the left, up in the dunes. How's this for a magic camp spot? We're right up above the beach, but we've got plenty of grass spots to choose from, which, if you ask me, is pretty good for a sand island. And we don't waste any time in getting the camp set up, with all the important fridges at an easy access height, plus a few other things to make camp life more comfortable. Alrighty, what I've got myself here is a bit of King's Mesh flooring. Now you can see we've got a bit of grass down here, so it's not going to be in too much of a need for this, but it's pretty humid tonight. I reckon tomorrow morning it's going to be pretty damp when we pack up camp. When you pack your swag up, as you know, when it's gotten damp, all the sand sticks to it, and that gives me the irrits. So I'm going to use my mat tonight, not so much to keep me off the sand, but so when I roll up my swag tomorrow morning, she's nice and clean, because we're going to be on the island for how long are we here for, Shauna? Five days? About five days. I want to try and keep me old swag as clean as possible for that time, which is why I'm not lending it to this bloke. So, use this tonight. Those weather reports are looking pretty accurate, and with some rain passing through, 
The boys are opting to put their awnings up. Big fella. Mate. Cheers, bud. Cheers. Yeah, How's good. Good day. Yeah, good Fraser. Well, as I'm about to say, you don't really need much on Fraser. Oh, there. mate. Super. If you come to a campsite like this, crack a cold one open. It's We've just. Got grass. I oh, know, it's perfect campsite. It is. It's it a is. really good campsite. The only concern I've got, mate, did you check the weather reports before we left? And it's um, it's not improving. Well, I, no. <laughs> I just checked it on the beach before I got a one bar reception. Yep. They're talking maybe yep. 140 kilometre hour winds. Now, I'm no boatie. I don't know what that means. That's pretty that quick. Means, that means it's really rough out there. <laughs> Hold on to your hat, mate. It's an actual it's cyclone, isn't it? Very nautical. Yeah. It's, it's a real cyclone. Like it's got a name. Yeah, it's, it's they've actually named it, which is, kind of concerns me a little bit. Yep. When they good name things it. are cyclones, though. They're very unpredictable. Okay. So <laughs> is that good it'll news, either it? hit us really hard or it won't. So yeah. Well, that's what I'm thinking. It'll either be. I think we'll be fine. Look at the weather now. It's, it's, not, it's not too bad. It's, it's not too blind. bad. I We've think got a couple just, of days. We just keep Look, an eye on it. Let's rip up the coast tomorrow. This, suck this it and place see. can get pretty gnarly if a cyclone hits it. We've been here before yeah, and no cyclone. it wasn't even a cyclone yeah. after the beach gets washed away. It's yeah. just a crazy place. Speaking of gnarly, super gnarly. Yeah. You're cooking? <laughs> Mate, it's going to be, the cyclone will be nothing compared to what I'm going to whip up. That's, that's for sure. I don't know how much dirty people we got. All right, well, where are you going to do it here? Yeah, I'm just about to, I'm just right. really just starting to sop myself you, up. You're getting this. in the mood? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then well, I'm going to, if it's okay with you, have another, another cheeky bit. And then I'll uh, I'll be your assistant. All right, mate. Done. Well, uh, better, better do me stretches first. Are you can't you can't side? get you can't get into this. I was Damn. sitting here, mate. Damn. With Sean's beer stretches done, it's time to get dinner on. Chef Whale, you're up. Well, I've got to come out and say it. Camping at Fraser Island, I reckon it doesn't get much better. That's one of my favourite places in Australia. And tonight, I'm going to cook up a bit of a feed. It's chicken burgers. I've never done chicken burgers before. This is a new recipe. I actually thought of this recipe on the drive up here. I thought, what can I make? Burgers, a few blokes. It's gonna be a top feed. So I'm gonna jump into the ultimatic and get the first ingredient. Now to make burgers, you always use mince. Now, of course you can buy chicken mince. So that's exactly what I've done here. Yeah. Oh, here comes trouble. What do you got here, mate? Mate, I'm gonna make some burgers tonight and chicken burgers. Chicken burgers? I know, I've never done chicken burgers before. I'm pretty excited about it. New, a, new recipe I just made up. So, is this a whale or is this a... No, this is, a, <laughs> this is yours truly, mate. I, I'm not even going to comment on what it's going to be like until we have a bite because I, I've got no idea. I'm going to need some... So, <laughs> jump in there, mate. Actually, while Do you need you're, anything from in here? Yeah, while, while you're in there, yep. mate. I've got some carrots and also some zucchini I'm going to chuck in there. You've got a big... No, no, back, this right at the back there, I think, I think it is. Oh. <laughs> Oh, hang on about. You're right. Oh, you're putting up a fight. Not up to use two hands, mate. Bloody mama! Oh, it's a boy. That is that. That's, <laughs> that's, that's only a moderate size, though. That's average. Well, that's right. Uh, well, I didn't know any different, but that's <laughs> to be honest with you. Average size. So you want, you, you want to keep carrots in there as well, mate? This is actually a homegrown one, mate. Straight out of my garden. It's the truth, man. You don't take after your veggies. I'll give you <laughs> <laughs> carrots. Beauty, beauty. All These right. are your beers, eh? These, they are my beers. Correct. Excellent. <laughs> Cheers, that, mate. Cheers, man. Oh. Right, so first things first. Obviously, yeah. get your chicken mince. Whack that straight into the pot. That's now, just... I'm making patties is what I'm doing here. The you right with that, mate? Goodness gracious. Yeah, so what you want to do with that one, mate? Well, I'm not sure I'm capable. <laughs> Two hands, grab that and... Um, I can't grate that. We, uh, sorry, we need to. We might have to cut it into slightly smaller pieces. Well, you guys. reckon? Yeah, look at that. That's a... So you just, basically what I'm doing is, oh, you're putting in there. yeah, so I'm making my chicken patties up. So I've got chicken mince. I'm going to whack a bit of zucchini and I'm also going to whack a bit of carrot in, grate it as well. Instead of using, usually you normally grate the zucchini and grate it that way. I just hold the zucchini under an arm and I, I just use the grater on it. That's the, that's the best way. It's like stroking a cat. So all right. put that last carrot in now. Here we go. So we've got the carrot, we've got the zucchini all in yep. there. I'm basically going to start. Hands are pretty, you wash pretty hands? clean, pretty clean sort yeah, of thing. Speaking, same. If you can crack a couple of eggs over my hands as I, yes! as I need it. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> that would be, that'd have be you, delightful. Have you seen, just out of interest, um, the movie Ghost? I have actually. There's a, there's a scene yeah. in there. At, <clears> that's amazing. Right, making a well here. That's great drop, great drop. Go another one. Go another one? Yeah, don't be sure. Okay. Mate, there's also some coriander in the little tube over there. Yep, I've got this. We usually go with fresh stuff, but when, nah, you're, yeah, when, you're, when you're at camp and you, you try and get this sort of gear, whack all of that in there. Coriander and chicken, they go together great. So, do they? Do they? I think so, I hope so. <laughs> you know, when you do a burger, right? You yeah. got a few little bits and pieces. I've got some beetroot, I've got some pineapple chuck on there, but you need a good sauce, right? Say so lychee, we're out. No, no, we, no, there's no lychees, unfortunately. Oh, I would goodness. put lychees in there, though. You don't put lychees in burgers. In fact, you shouldn't put lychees in anything, it's illegal. This stuff here is the old. 
uh, either I don't pronounce it wrong, it's a Japanese thing, I'll call it uh, Queepy Mayonnaise. <laughs> Queepy? Queepy? I don't know, mate. So what are you gonna do, put that in there? Yeah, so it's just a mayonnaise, it's a Japanese mayonnaise, if you wanna get technical about it. So I'm basically just, just go nice and high with it, and then come back down it. So I've basically got just hot chili sauce, so I'm making, I'm making a bit of a, yep. what do you call it, a cocktail? I don't know, it's a bit of a cocktail. What you, have you got something to stir there? Well, I do, I do, I do oh, actually. Truth, man. Hang on, we've got one more little ingredient though. Oh, Tabasco oh, habanero. Oh, this is the, the hottest one you can get of the Tabasco family. Yeah, let's go, let's. Just really shake it in there. Oh, anything that sauces involves a lot of shaking, I've found. Yeah, it does. To get the good sauce, anyway. That's it. <coughs> it's good? It's really hot, that. It's really hot. It's got, <laughs> it's got some spice in it's there. Good, in a burger. You know it's got a new cooker too. I do, mate. How good is that? That's a hell of a sauce, bro. Oh, we're on, we're on. Yeah, we're good. So That's what I'm doing good. here, fair bit of olive oil in there. There's some heat there, boy. Some olive oil. <clears throat> now, how do you make these patties? <clears throat> you use your hands? Yeah. This is the sort of meal that the whole family would get involved. You know, you get the kids involved. Like Rather I wouldn't, I've seen what kids do with their hands. <laughs> <laughs> Grab a fair old chunk yep. like that. Yep. Make a patty, make a patty. I am ready. I like, and I like the fact, just you, the old, we've done it before, we use the lid of the baduri. Yeah. The baduri is like your one stop oh, shop. I, I, I do, I just use it for everything. A few minutes later. Wait, wait we've got an extinguisher handy. Oh, no, we're good. I'm stressing out. Wait, um, wait, wait, you gotta get that up. It shouldn't be like that. Okay, it shouldn't be like that. It's on. actually melted through the table. Hang on. Little tip oh. for the young players. Yep, uh, yep. Oh, heck, I'm stressing out. Oh, I don't I've got do. this, I've got this, i got this. Yep, 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 keep it going. Whoa, oh. careful. And listen, folks, if you haven't got an adult around, yeah. Woo! Yeah, be careful. You wouldn't want to leave that on the table and go over here. <laughs> it be on the floor. You come back. Where's, where's my meal? Well, far well, you out. You got holes in your table now. Nah, it's got air holes, like speed holes. You know, there's, there's a fair bit of heat there. Cast iron. You see, the, the properties of cast iron. The heat will transfer quite slowly through the metal, but when it does Straight get hot into the table, <laughs> it'll go all the way. And that's what happens there, right? Eh? Now we're good. We're good. Now we're talking. Yeah, we've got some pockets. Hey, these look pretty good, man. They do look good. Oh, that, that's looking, that's looking that's good. That's good. Oh, look at that. The pot, we chucked a bit of pineapple. I'm salivating so much I can hardly talk. A bit of pineapple onto the hot plate. Yep. It's going to caramelise, just like Graham said. Yep. And um, be super tasty. Boys, <laughs> come on in. Who's got a bun? There we go. Uh, is it now Ooh, pineapple yeah. on, pineapple on top. You like a burnt one? Yeah. You like it? You yeah. like them like that? Here we go. Here we go. Bit of sauce. Chuck that on. Yep, yep. Don't be shy, boys. Don't be shy. Chili, chili sauce. Grab it. Here we go. Look at that. Look at that. Whack that on top. You might need a couple more. What do you reckon, boys? Mark. Right, yeah. It's not bad. I'm feeling it. Chili sauce. Just when you think you go, oh, that's not that hot, it comes right up and uppercut you. These burgers, real easy to make. Chicken, zucchini, carrot. Do make your spray. own make your own patties up and chuck whatever fillings you like. I like a bit of chili sauce. I made that up with a bit of mayonnaise and some chili and some Tabasco. Folks, what do you reckon? Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. Yeah, Here we really go. Really good, mate. Really good. Nine. Nine. I reckon. I reckon we go sit on the camp chairs and maybe mm -hmm. talk about the A series or something. Well, that, that won't last long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good is that. That's actually all right. That's pretty good, yeah. As the sun rises on another day on Fraser, you really do have to pinch yourself at the beauty of this place. Still, that persistent wind doesn't bode well and it's now official that a cyclone is actually hanging off the coast, but we don't know at this point whether it'll cross the island or continue out to sea. I reckon one of the best nights I've ever had in the, in the swag, there was certainly no shortage of breeze, it <laughs> came right in there. That wind has come up, what do you reckon it is, 30 odd knots, you reckon? Yeah, easy 30 knots, blowing a gale. And uh, what's it expected to get to? Because I'm a bit hopeless with wind, like I get a lot of it, so, but I'm a bit hopeless with it. They're forecasting at least double this. So you wouldn't be able to stand on this dune? Mate, you have to hold on to your knickers because they'd blow off. <laughs> that's, that's how windy they're going to get. If you were wearing any. <laughs> <laughs> this is right. What's the plan for today, mate? I reckon no, I'm continuing up the aisle. These boys haven't seen a lot of the aisle. We're yep. showing the best bits, so yep. I reckon we get right up, Indian head. Even Megala Rocks are trying to even hit the gate tonight. Well, I'm going to go for the best fuel efficiency ever by turning the engine off and being Just, blown up there. You could, mate, but a sail <laughs> you, you do about 50 knots up the beach. All right, well, let's wake these boys up. You get right into Finish it. Finish prekking and get into it. Can't wait, mate. How good is this? Mate, this is an absolute rig. I thought I'd got to come over and have a quick look at 
exactly what you've done, folks. This is Darren Vassy, a good mate of mine. He's the owner of Custom RV, and this is actually, your work is the home of our full direction vehicles, but a lot of wicked custom vehicles come out of your shop, and this is one of them, mate. Run us through this 79, because you've done a lot of work. You've taken a stock 79 and made it this. Mate, it was a brand new car when it came into us. Um, first thing went uh, straight to J-Max. J-Max done a full GVM upgrade on it, okay? So, and uh, coil rear end in it. So the leaf spring's been taken out and a full J-Max rear end has been put in. So it's coil sprung front and rear. We've also done a wholesale automatics transmission conversion. So it's got the six-speed Tiptronic um, automatic in it. Mate, uh, and it goes like a treat. Run us through this can canopy. This is obviously, you've made this one from scratch. You've, um, and what you guys do is basically exactly that. Whatever the customer wants, you make it. So run us through exactly what you've done with this canopy because it's a work of art. Mate, yeah, look, we cater to the customer's requirements within the rules um, and we've created something that uh, he's been thinking of for quite a while. So we've got a um, 1800 canopy with, which is hidden with spare tyres on the back. They do drop down, it's to give it that extra element of feature. Uh, he wanted something completely different and uh, that's hopefully what we've given him. So we've got um, your, your clear view fridge slide and uh, custom made drawer, so we've done the full fit out on this as well, and along with all the electrical. There really is something for everything. I can see a shower at the back here. Is that a shower? Yeah, there's a shower, there's a shower as well. Hot water shower. So hot and cold water. So that's off a heat exchanger within the car. Lots of storage around here. And like little touches like this, like you've got laser cut LC79 to there. Yeah, it's actually got lighting behind that. Lighting, so, yeah, lighting behind it. Lighting <laughs> and, and it changes colours as well. So that storage, storage, storage box. Now he's got um, compressors and whatnot actually in behind all this. Yep. So there's a, there's a fair bit uh, going on in, in behind there. Um, there's uh, water pumps on the other side, uh, remote water system pickup as well. So if you are near a water source, you can go and collect with a bucket and you don't have to use your tank water, put a hose in it, flick a lever around and you can actually suck from the bucket. How handy is that? So what's this vehicle been built for? It's obviously been built for remote touring or? Yeah, for desert. So a lot has been done for desert. The gentleman owns this, he does a lot of desert trips. So that's what we primarily set it up for. Mate, it's an absolute work of art. I love seeing this thing in the convoy. I'll leave you pack up and um, we'll get in there, mate. No problem. Cheers, mate. Things are looking up again as we approach the first real test of the island, Indian Head. Now, this place is usually a good indicator of how soft the sand will be across the island, which of course changes frequently depending on the weather and how much traffic it's got. Oh yeah. Well, the boys, Indian Head, 33 degrees outside. It could be a little soft. I'll go through first. See some sand spitting from the back of that D-Max, mate. Got into manual mode here. Second gear. And just giving it a bit of her three. It's not too bad, not too bad. Oh, there we go. A little bit soft in the middle, mate. Um, not too bad, not too bad at all. I'll be that, mate, I'll come through. That's well done. Gee whiz, I'll tell you what, those waves are picking up. That's a big swell out there. Sitting in about low range, fourth gear. Now I'm gonna give it heaps. This first bit is a bit where most people get stuck. I've sailed through here so far. It's all pretty soft until you get up over here. The problem that a lot of people make though is they stay into it for too long. There's a couple of big whoop de doos up here. If you hit those too hard, I've actually seen people hit their radiators and, and crack their radiators through here. So just back off a little bit for the whoop de doos yeah, copy, mate. Got heaps of momentum coming through here. Let's send the dog up. Stu Dog is a bloke that never backs off. He's building up plenty of momentum here. This could be interesting. Oh, Stu, he's got two front wheels <laughs> off the sand. <laughs> oh, mate, that was impressive. Let someone film that. Bears Box boys have done it picture perfect. They've come in hot, get through that soft sand, but then washed it all off before those whoop de doos taking it nice and easy, sailed through That's the other end. Really good drive, boys. I don't doubt that Shane's gonna wanna test out that fulcrum suspension through here. Let's see how he goes. Holy heck, there's testing and then there's that. What on earth were you thinking, boys? <laughs> I've never seen anything that? like it. Well, if your suspension can handle that, it can handle anything. Ooh. Looks like the iDrive boys didn't get the memo either. They've come through pretty hot as well. Now Darren knows Fraser like the back of his hand. He's also no slouch behind the wheel. He'll handle this textbook, you watch. That's it, washes off his speed, into the whoop-de-doos, powers back out. Perfectly done, mate. 
Well, it's getting to that time of day again when the beaches are becoming impassable. But there's a heap to do inland. I tell you what, that is a good looking convoy and everyone makes short work of Fraser's soft inland tracks. Our next destination is something you'd think entirely impossible on an island made of sand. But this place is full of surprises just like this, the Valley of the Giants. The tracks wind down into, you guessed it, a valley. And you can see evidence of the island's logging history in the form of these huge wooden bridges. Soon we're deep in a lush rainforest and you'd be forgiven for thinking it arrived in the Daintree. It's absolutely amazing. How good is this? The land of the giants. I've always wanted to come down and see this myself. And you get a load of some of these trees, you realise just the sheer size and epic proportion of this place. It's amazing. No wonder they call them the Valley of the Giants, mate. I feel like I'm a midget. How good's the contrast of Fraser? A bit like Victoria, except for the sand. Fraser Island is nothing more than sand on top of volcanic deposits, neither one of which holds anything that can grow life. So how on earth can there be rainforests, dry woodlands, grasslands, this entire and changing ecosystem? Well, it comes down to one fact, and that is that there is a type of fungi, that's right, a little tiny mushroom that lives in the sand over here, upon which other things can feed. And that circle of life continues right the way through till you get these mighty trees here in the rainforest, starting off with bacteria that feed on that fungi. If we were to lose that one fungi, if it were to die out tomorrow from some rare disease, Fraser Island as you know it now would cease to exist. Everything would die, it would erode away, the wind would blow the sand away and the ocean would do the rest. So, next time you're having mushrooms with your bacon and eggs, spare a thought for Fraser Island and why it exists. While we've been exploring the forest, conditions have been quickly changing and the eastern wind is turning into a gale. There's a real possibility of fallen trees blocking these inland tracks, but we're determined to show the boys as much of the island as we can. It's time to head towards the biggest challenge on Fraser, Nagala Rocks. We've had many run-ins with this place in the past, recovering vehicles well into the night. As with much of Fraser, you really have to suck it up and see. As to the track conditions, they change almost daily. Still, we've got to get there first, and up ahead is the first of what I think will become a regular problem on this trip. Is this down we come through? Not at all, mate. This is not the first either. I'll get the heaviest bit, boys, don't worry about that. We can hear that wind absolutely howling up in the trees and soon we come across a serious obstacle blocking the track. Well, this is a tree without a shadow of a doubt, oh. mate. Ow! I think I chose a really bad way to go through. You did. So did I, actually. Well, got a pivot point over there. What are you thinking? I reckon we put a winch over here, way over here. Yep. That'll come down, don't worry about that. Yep. And then uh, I'll back up into there a bit. We'll see if we can pull him off the track. So you just winch it straight out? I think we'd be able to. I reckon we've got a good chance. Yeah, yeah. It's not a huge tree. It's big enough though to stop us yeah, if we don't do that. Yeah. If we don't do that, we ain't going this way. Get the recovery gear out. All right, let's give it a go. We're well equipped, of course, for these kind of situations. And pretty quickly, we've got everything set up to attempt yep. a winch. I've just decided to put a winch block on this tree to get the angle right. Trying to get that tree over this side right off the track so it doesn't go in the middle of the track. It's um, a big tree and not much room to work with, so I'm not even sure it's going to work, to be honest with you, but can't sit around here without giving it a go anyway. The winch is in position, but even with that pulley block in place, this big old tree is putting up a fair amount of resistance. It's remarkably heavy. Yeah, it is a big tree. But slowly but surely, we're slowly progressing. How good are winches, eh? After a quick reset to straighten the line pull out, we've got the large tree off the track in no time.
Not too bad, not too bad. A little bit of a clean up and um, we'll have this track open in another couple of minutes. The boys jump in to help and get the last of the branches off the track and just like that, the track is opened up again. All right, well, I reckon you've just hit through there. Yeah, I'll, oh, come, yeah. I'll come real close. Yep, and nah, easy. I reckon there'll be a few more. There'll be another one just down <laughs> here, I I'll bet. I've said it before and I'll say it again. A winch is something I wouldn't go bush without these days. For those at home looking to spend a week on Fraser, one thing you'll have to consider is how much gear you'll be running off your batteries. I've got a fridge in here that the boys like to hang around a lot. I've got camp lights and all my own 12 volt needs, so I need a pretty trick 12 volt system, which I've got. There's no dramas about that. One thing in particular is the little battery monitor I've got in here. I can see exactly how much charge I've got left, how long it's gonna to take to charge it back to 100%, and also how many amps are drawing. Give them the confidence to know that I'm always gonna have enough 12 volt power. Just like that, the infamous Nagala Rocks is up ahead. What the cameras can't show you is the howling wind blowing up the track. But trust me, this is as wild as I've ever seen it. Still, we came here to wheel, so let's get into it. Alrighty, this right here is the infamous Nagala Rocks. And look, if you're gonna get stuck on Fraser Island, it's gonna be right here. I'm gonna break it up into sections for you. This part I'm going through right now, usually pretty good. It's the coffee rock section through the canyon. You can see why they call it coffee rock. You can actually stop through here. You know, this is not a part where you need to have massive amounts of momentum. But now there's always a puddle here. Sometimes it's shallow, sometimes it's deep. As a rule, this puddle here has got a pretty good surface on it. So I'm gonna give it a go now. We'll step up to get into it. And when you get through this puddle, heading north of course, there's another spot you can stop, take a breath and get your bearings. All right, here's for the puddle. Here we go. It's very narrow. You'll notice this when you do it. She's not, oh, she's a bit deep today. I'm gonna get into it a bit. It's a little bit deep. Okay, once you're through there, you're back out on this soft sand. You take a breather here, reevaluate. But once you get through this bit, it's go, 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 the whole damn way. She is soft, boys, really soft. That wind has made it so gnarly, the camera crew can't even get their cameras out They're using GoPros to film. You can't even see the track in front. We had four four-wheel drives come through not five minutes ago. They got stuck up in this entrance part here. Had to put Max tracks down to get through. I've lost their tracks. Woo -hoo. But we're doing it. We're doing it. All right, that's how you do it. Go to the D-Max. That is as soft as I've seen it. Coming up the other end, that's gonna be next level. All right, Ningala Rocks, one of my favorite spots of Fraser. This place is savage at the moment. We've got probably about 50 knot winds, so they're increasing through the afternoon. And uh, here we go, Graham has made it, so that's a good sign. Gotta make sure I'm in the right gear here. You just don't wanna back off or get it wrong, because that's when you go down. Look at that wind. I'm gonna see sand just, look at the sand flying off the beach. This is wild. Right into it. Oh no, that's a bad gear change. Into it, into it. So you don't want to back off here. Just hold it tight. And like I always say in the Gala Rocks, when you think you've made it, just keep going. Because it just keeps going this hill. Up, up, up. How good is that? The Gala Rocks. Ooh, I thought Sean had stuffed that with that weird gear change in the middle, but he's made it. That's the beauty of a bit of power on tap. All right, let's send the dog up. Go, 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 go. This is a really soft day. Despite having one of the more sophisticated autos in the business, Stu's only got two gears, go and stop. Right now, he's using the go gear, and look at him. He's gonna make it through there unscathed. Righto, Shane, let's see what you got, mate. Put it through our paces, buddy. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, I think I just tagged him with sand, man. 
Tim and Aiden have got all the power in the world there thanks to the throttle controller they're currently running. I don't think this is going to pose any problems at all. However, having said that, there's been a few four-wheel drives in front of them and that usually makes the sand a bit softer. Oh, thank goodness the camera crew opted to use GoPros for this part of the shoot because you wouldn't be cleaning the sand out of those expensive cameras for the next 10 years. Wim's managed to get the keys off Darren for this section, and I don't blame him. With a truck like that, I wouldn't hand the keys to anybody, even the bloke that built it. All the trucks are through and they're unscathed, but the tide has turned and the wind is pushing the waves right up the beach. In preparation for the cyclone, local rangers have been moving people south, meaning we're the last visitors up here. This might be the end of the line for us. Well, mate. We're running out of beach quick. Running out of beach. This is a bit like turning around from the summit of Everest when you've only got 100 metres to go. I want to take these boys to the tip of Sandy Cape as much as anyone does. That's but the line, mate. I, you've so seen I the strongly report. believe that we're not even going to make it around the corner. Because no. as soon as that tide comes up, we're only two hours after low tide. And this place is just, throw the tide book out the window because the yep. cyclones just cause them, the waves to just come up on the beach yeah, here. We're yeah, losing yeah, yeah. beach every minute we stand here. Now I'm not concerned about having to camp somewhere up high if we can get there. What I'm concerned about is getting six cars stuck up against the sand dune down here yeah. and having a wave come in and hit everyone. Um, I think the best bet, we've got Orchid Beach here, some lovely campsites yep. down the back there. Yep. I reckon we might have to just go back through Ningala. Hopefully we don't get stuck. That's a big ask. <laughs> Hopefully you don't right. get stuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, and maybe find someone to camp. We are so close to Sandy Cape, you I sure know, we're going to do this? I know, but it, the thing is, you do get stuck up there, and those and those seven metre swells do come in. and the... You might not leave for weeks. Oh, it breaks my heart. It that, does, it does. That's a kick in the it guts. Does. All does. right. But there's plenty of oh, no, good spots to do. here, so. It's just, you know, my love of that place know, up there. it's fantastic. All right, let's turn around, boys. Sorry to say it. We're going to turn around. It's not often you get to tackle Nagala Rocks twice in one day, but that's exactly what we've got to do right now. Audio boys, I've been stuck coming in northbound and I've been stuck going out southbound. <laughs> Let's see what today brings. I think this might be a bit of a challenge up through here but we'll see. I'll give it a go. Yeah copy mate. Going in hot. I'm going in hot through this section here. Oh, 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 oh. Momentum is not key. Yes, yes, yes. He's done it. He's done it. Oh hang on. No I haven't. This section through here infamous for being soft. It's all about momentum and keeping the rev range up now. I've gone into manual mode. Second gear, low range. And I'm trying to keep my revs at around three, three and a half RPM. If I start to feel wheel spin, I'm actually going to back off. I don't want wheel spin. I'm going to back off a bit and see if I can't feather it. Last little bit here, Nagala Rocks. It's all downhill from here. If I can just get to it, she's pretty good. She's pretty good. That is very cool. Big girl, you did me proud. That didn't look too bad, mate. I want to come through. Second or third gear, this is the question. I'm going to go second. Oh, hang on. Uh oh, uh oh, this might have been a bad decision. <laughs> Thought I stuffed up gear selection again, but it's all good. We're through. Come on, Stu. Coming out, yeah. Tell him, mate, you want to take this uh, real easy, are you, Stu? Yep. Jono, if that were me, mate, I would have left a bigger gap between yourself and the stew dog. I reckon he'll catch you in seconds. That bloke does not know how to slow down. Righto, boys, the dog's called you through. <laughs> Give it to her. The spares box Prado has handled that like right walk in the park. Through, boys. Nice to see. Struth, Shane, entertaining as always. Nagala Rocks is not going to get the better of him. Aiden's behind the wheel for this drive and he's rooster tailing his way to success. They've got this, I know they have. With the lights starting to fade, it really is time to head to camp. There might be a storm on the horizon, but this place is still absolutely stunning. long for us to have the swags rolled out and camp set up. Then, it's time for a very, very well-earned beer. Fraser, you're one heck of a place.
With early morning comes a new report. That cyclone is bearing down on the coast and only just hours away. We don't waste any time in getting packed up and hitting the road. If we miss this low tide, we could be stuck here for a long, long time. So there's absolutely no time to waste. Well, that's looking pretty good, pretty good. You know, by on Fraser, lives by the tides. High tide, stay in camp, read a book, drink a beer. Low tide, get on the beach, get where you gotta be. However, when you get these conditions, these big stormy conditions, cyclone hovering off the coast, strong winds, the tides can be a little bit unpredictable. This morning we've got up super early, the sun has only just popped up over the horizon in order to get down the beach on what is predicted to be a pretty good low tide. But even now you can see, there ain't much beach to deal with. But the early bird gets the worm and that's exactly what we're gonna do. Shine, right, copy mate. Yeah, gotcha mate. Plan to get up early, mate. Looks like it's paid off. This is a pretty good tide. Pretty good tide. Yeah, we can't complain with this one, mate. I reckon if we left it another hour, um, we'd be there for most of the day. And that's the problem, mate. I think the next low is like two o'clock this afternoon. It's just uh, that can't happen. We've got to get moving. That's it. Well, probably the, the fastest pack down a camp I've ever seen. All the boys are behind me, so we're good to go. Right, well, mate. I reckon the plan is we uh, let's do a bit of inland scouting. What do you reckon? Yeah, good call, mate. Good call. Follow me, mate. Follow me. Boys, you keen? Yeah, mate, keen as. For sure, mate. Let's get it. Let's get that bread. I'll tell you what, Fraser Island is one of the most stunning destinations in Australia. Even if there's a bit of a cyclone off the coast, in all weather conditions, there's always something to do and to see on Fraser. Now, two little tips I wanna give you, things to take with you. You don't need a lot out here, mind you, but definitely take a tire deflator, get those tires down to 15, 18 PSI if you need to, so you can drive anywhere on the island without getting bogged. And the second thing, of course, is a tide chart. Without a tide chart on this trip, we would have been absolutely buggered. So with those two things, you'll have an amazing time on Fraser Island. Speaking of amazing time on Fraser Island, that's exactly what we've had. But the weather is closed in, we need to get off this beach. I think we're gonna hit inland and try and make the last ferry for the day. A bit of luck, we might just make it. As Sean said, the plan now is to get back south to the ferry. At Orchid Beach, we've learned the island has been closed to visitors and the ferry won't run after today until the cyclone has passed through. We've got one chance to make it back to the ferry in time and while the tide is high, inland is our best bet at the moment. Back on the coast, the weather has taken a real turn for the worse. Conditions are changing by the minute and we're soon in the midst of driving rain. Hey Sean, I got a copy? Yeah, got gotcha, you mate. Doesn't happen often mate, but one of the good things about a, a quick short shower like that on Fraser Island is it just gets rid of that salt and sand off your truck. Yeah, I couldn't agree more mate. I don't have my um, little water jets working on the windscreen, so this is uh, a blessing for me. Yeah, I thought the same thing when it came bolting down then. I can get me shiny new paintwork back. Stu, mate, I know you're froth on these trips. You said you put a new, what was it, a computer in your auto? I don't understand these things, mate. Ah, uh, yeah, the new Copper Shift 3, which is a standalone controller that we've always had, but the new one's now um, IP rated and... Dust proof and also Bluetooth app. Set up. Welcome to the future, Bluetooth. So what does that mean? You can got a little app on your phone and you can adjust it? Yeah, that's that's correct. And we also go, can download a program from the cloud if we want to change things, etc. from the from the main office as well. Mate, that is unbelievable. So you're, what are, you, are you calling this a bit of a testing trip, are you? Or are you calling this an absolute holiday? <laughs> oh, that's a bit of both, mate. You know what I'm like. <laughs> the big beastie. Hey mate, how you going? I'm doing real well. Hey listen, you are eating this soft sand up. But I'm gonna put you on the spot with this. How much do you attribute to your throttle controller? The throttle controller probably does help to make us look a little bit better. Yep. Uh, a little bit more of a skillful driver than I am. <laughs> I it need one then. <laughs> allows me to just to, to get better control over the wheel speed. Yeah. Uh, okay. So when we need it punchy, we can put it into the ultimate mode. Yep. 
when we are in low range and, and trying to crawl and walk over things, we can put it into the eco mode and slow it right down. That is so cool. And you've got a third mode? And there's the automatic control mode, which allows it to adjust based on your pedal pressure. So if you accelerate gently, it comes on less aggressively. Yep. If you accelerate yep. hard, it comes on more aggressively. Right, so let me get this right. Nagala rocks, we want to get all that throttle right away, get some power up, get some speed up. Well, well through Nagala rocks, we had it on eco, walking through. Okay. And then when we got to the water, we yep. bumped it up to U5. Yep. And that gave us the punch to get up the hill. That makes perfect sense mm. to me. And so it's that, quick and easy to adjust. So that's it's just, the, it's just pushing some buttons, isn't just it? Just pushing some buttons. And you can do that on the fly? And you can do it on the fly. Man, that is so darn handy. Well, it's proving itself here. I'm seeing the proof of the pudding. I don't know, mate. Keep it up. If we need to snatch someone out, I've got you on speed dial. Cheers, mate. We're looking forward to it. Cool, cool. Fraser's inland tracks will only take you so far and eventually we have to head back to the beach to head south. According to the tide chart, we should be coming up on the next low, but what greets us on the coast is not a pretty scene. Whoa, look at this beach. Look at this beach, mate. There's not much left of it. It has been <laughs> thrashed and we've we just got to get south. We've got to get off the island, mate. Yeah, we'll have our work cut out, mate. There's no doubt about it. I think we'll be uh, out on a few waves to get there, if we get there. Timing is everything, mate. I think it's just going to be a case of spreading out a bit and uh, keeping your eye on those waves. Uh, I guess we can just uh, skinny pedal and, and hope for the best. It's quite ominous, though, isn't it? Uh, just big, long stretch of beach, whitewash everywhere, windy. <laughs> Yeah, mate, it looks like you're somewhere in the bottom of Tasmania at the moment. All right, mate, well, I'm not going to hang around. I'll uh, catch you at the other end. <laughs> Good job, mate. With a strong wind pushing us along, we make good progress down that eastern beach. But at the next headland, we encounter another problem. This is supposed to be an outgoing tide right here, but the waves have literally eaten the beachway. This could be a game changer. This is the entry up into Champagne Pools. Of course, we're tracking south at the moment. I've never seen the ocean here like this. And this is the calm before the storm. Have a look at this. We've got about four metre swells at the moment. The water's back right up. Check this out. This is the entry to the track. Look at that. We're going to get down through here. As soon as that tide abates. Unbelievable. When it comes up here, it just puts us right up over where the camera goes up. The reason we're doing this right now is we've been ordered to head south. We're not allowed to camp on the beach. We are the only ones up here at the moment. There's other than the locals living at Orchid. They're totally safe. We are the only ones this far north on Fraser Island right now. We've got to get south. Whoa, that is heavy, man. Camera crew just got they swamped. just got smashed. Look at this here. Right. The massive tides and the massive waves that are coming through are going to inundate all of the camping up here. So whilst it might look like what we're doing is a bit reckless, we have to do this. We have to get south right now. So long as we time this right, this beach is okay. I am glad I'm not going that way. That looks diabolical. I'm standing down the beach. I'm going to time it for Graham. So I can just come up there in this corner, but I can, so I'm going to find it up there as well. Here we go ahead. Let's actually put the D Max in my tackle there. I think if he gets it right, he's going to get about 150 metres down the beach, we should be okay. The plan is to move after the big wave comes in. This is going to be tight. Alright, we're going, we're going. I'm not waiting around. Yeah. It's going to be, a, I've just got to time this perfectly. Man, that wind. The sand coming back at me here is insane. Yeah, good job. As you can see, I've timed that to perfection. I've got heaps of beach to play with, but what you're not seeing is what would happen if I got it wrong. Waves are smashing up against these sand dunes. So timing is everything. That was, that was something else. Yeah. Okay, 
It's all a matter of timing. So what I found out is there's gonna be one big wave, huge surge, that'll come out. And on the biggest wave just after that, you go for it and you don't stop. You, you gotta get about 500 meters down the beach. I'm safe. Yeah, it's a good drive, Graham. Timed beautifully. No, oh, hang on, there's a wave in front of me. Ah, hurry up. Let's time that one, time that one, and go. This is so gnarly. You may as well throw the tide book out the window. I've said it a couple of times on this trip, and it couldn't be more true. The problem is, when it's low tide, you've got about an hour either side of the dead of low tide to get anywhere on the beach. Otherwise, these huge king tides and the cyclone are just eating up the beach with um, waves. So it's making for some very interesting driving on Fraser. And this is what it looks like if you get your timing wrong. Whilst you've got plenty of beach and those waves go out, once they come in, you've got nothing. And you would be absolutely nailed by big incoming surges. Not only would that do your vehicle a lot of damage, it's actually very unsafe. Right, Ace Stu, let's get that timing spot on, mate. Coming down. The dog doesn't hang around at the best of times, and I guarantee he won't be here. Hit a small wave there, you can see the water wash up behind him, but he ain't stopping. That's smart, just keep going, mate. We can wash that off later. Have a go at that, will ya? That's the surge after Stu's been through. Like I keep saying, timing is everything. Righto, boys, give that Prado its head. Get through there, you've got this. Here we go. Down to the beach, it's a long way down. There she is. Yep, there's the side steps, that's all right. Yep, there's the tow bar, that's all right. All right, here we go, no fast pedal. Mate, you've got to time this right, otherwise yeah. you're going to be in a bad, bad way. And we're through. That was sick. There we go. Let's go. Come on, son. And floor it. Let's go. And floor it. Yep, never a truer word spoken. And we're through, I think. Woo! It is a relief, I've got to admit. I know exactly how you feel, boys. All right, this is sketchy. Here we go. Oh. Woo! And into it. Unleash the power indeed. Use that throttle controller, mate. If ever there was a time, this is it. Is there speed limits oh, when no. you're racing the time? Okay, let's hear the big 79 sing. Come on, we don't want to make another artificial reef here. Get into it. Excuse if you're sitting at home right now thinking to yourself, what are these boys talking about? It looks absolutely farmy on the camera, and it does. What you're not experiencing are these winds right now, which are, uh, I've never actually felt anything quite as strong as these winds. This is nothing yet. The cyclone's not due to hit till later on today or even tomorrow. But what there is absolutely no way we can mask is that out there. It's almost black out there at 1.34 in the afternoon. That is the cyclone coming in. We've been given instructions to get south, get off the beaches. And so whilst it probably looks pretty darn good on the TV screens, trust me when I say, conditions are fairly wild out here. But we're in control. Whoa. We're in control, we know what we're doing. Now that we can see a bit of beach up in front of us, we're starting to make some real progress. The last ferry is fast approaching, so we really can't afford to hang around. Shane, you got a copy back there, mate? Yeah, Graham. How can I help you, mate? Mate, I'm going along looking at his split here, eh? Hey, listen, quick word in your ear. When it comes to setting up suspension for trips like Fraser, 
Simpson Desert, uh, the sort of the more sandier sort of terrains that we like to try and conquer. What do you what do you recommend, mate? What's what's the go for you? Well, it all depends on how you have your vehicle set up with your accessories, mate. Okay, so would you suggest to someone that they've just bought a new vehicle, they put the accessories on it first, then look at suspension, so they've got their weights right? Mate, that would be preferred because honestly, the the difference in spring rates for a bull bar winch compared to nothing at all, you really don't want the heavy one if you haven't got anything on. Mate, I'm uh, currently in an IFS vehicle and have been for quite some time and I'm a big convert towards them these days. Tell me about suspension setups on an IFS vehicle, clearance wise, etc, etc. Well, when you got the weight on there, that comes into how much clearance you got. So if you've got a light spring, heavy bull bar and winch, you're not going to get the clearance you get if you put the right spring in there for that load. If you don't gain that extra 50 mil clearance from doing a lift, everything underneath is going to act like a boat anchor. I guess at the end of the day, mate, suspension is one of those things that really can make or break a four-wheel drive, eh? Yeah, mate, that's why she'd always talk to someone who's a bit of an expert on the subject. Yeah, I guess that's across the board with a lot of things, but yeah, suspension being one of those things that uh, I've seen a car set up well, I've seen a car set up poorly, and the difference is chalk and cheese. As the next wave of the front pushes up over us, we start to see some of the casualties of the wild conditions. We've got something interesting up on the beach up ahead here. We pick our way around the wreckage, the beach is starting to disappear again. We're getting a bit nervous. Shono, I don't like having this cliff on my right hand side, mate. Yeah, it's a little bit concerning, mate, when the waves are pumping on one side and you can't even jump into the dunes on the other. You're sort of stuck here, you're in no man's land. Yeah, like right now, like right damn now. Oh. Just like that, a big wave hits the side of the D-Max. I've got nothing I can do here but slow up and try to stop more salt from flooding under the vehicle. I'm backing off. Lucky I stopped, because I've got waves breaking in front of me. Uh, what have we got, about 12 k's to go to get to the ferry? Yeah, about that, mate, about that. All right, we've got this, we've got this. Let's try and, uh, let's try and get this done. Well, me too, mate, we don't have too much light left, you know, and they stop the ferry at about five, I think. Let's chat to hurry up. Shut up, Stu, I don't believe anyone actually asked you, mate. <laughs> You're actually in my way. It's uh, Stu's buy when we get into it, by the way. You're buying floaties at this rate. <laughs> yeah. Stu, how have you enjoyed Fraser Island, mate? This is your first time up here. Ah, it's been really good. Most of all, it's been quite the adventure, to be honest. There's been a few little uh, curveballs thrown our way, courtesy of Mother Nature, but um, yeah, I reckon it's been a good trip. Yeah, no, it's been awesome. So it certainly makes me want to come back again, for sure. What about Sam and Andy from Spares Box? You guys um, look like you've been having a ball. No, it doesn't get any better. I think Sam's been looking at real estate and wants to move up here. Shit. Yeah, that's a go, that's a go. Jane, you've had a ball, mate. You've been testing suspension. How's everything going for you? Mate, my favourite part of it and the most challenging part of it was Nagala Rocks. Yeah, that's been a favourite of mine for a long time, mate. It's uh, it's one of those ones you want to tick off the bucket list. You know, I've made Nagala Rocks and it's good that everyone did on this trip. Oh, mate, I came close. I lost all momentum at one point, but pulled through it. That's a go. And Tim from iDrive, you've been having a good time, mate. What's your favourite part been? Funnily enough, the beating the tides has been quite a challenge, so that's probably one of my favourite parts, has been just the, the challenge of getting ahead of it. To be honest, it's been sort of heart and mouth sort of stuff, but um, it adds a whole new dimension to the island, if you ask me. Darren, how have you, how have you gone, mate? You and Wim up the back there, you've been keeping everyone in line. Yeah, mate, no, totally been enjoying it. Um, always love coming over to Fraser, and uh, I don't care what the weather's like, mate, I still love it. And what a rundown for that 79, mate. It's been, um, we've seen a bunch of different conditions, from soft sand to um, racing out waves. It's done really well, hasn't it? Yeah, mate, I think uh, Wim's on a winner here, mate. He's um, he's helped us build a uh, beautiful truck, mate, and um, I hope he enjoys driving it. The ferry is getting real close now, and it looks like we've timed it just right. All being well, we should just catch the last ferry of the day. At last, we round that final corner and I can see the Manta Ray barge up ahead. Shorto, over on the left, mate. It's almost a sad sight to see, but at the same time, we made it. I was gonna say, it's bittersweet, mate. We've uh, we made it to the ferry. There's a couple of moments there, incoming waves, etc., etc., where I thought it's truth. I might become a local on Fraser. Goes to show, mate, nothing wrong with a bit of bad weather. Just bad preparation will stop you from having a ball on Fraser. 
That's exactly right, mate. But uh, for now, I reckon we line up. Jeez, I reckon she's going to be a choppy old ride back too. <laughs> I reckon we haven't seen the worst of it yet, mate. Love this place, and this will go down as a very memorable trip to Fraser Island. We didn't get to Sandy Cape, but we, um, you'll agree, mate, we had an absolute ball. Oh, of course it will. I mean, to, you know, to be kicked off the island because of a cyclone and to see the weather and the waves and the uh, wind that we experienced. Woo! Good time, Colin. And with that, it's time to say goodbye once again to Fraser Island. Look, this has definitely not been what you'd call an average Fraser trip, but i got a feeling this will go down as one of the more memorable visits we'll have here. The boys have lined the four-wheel drives up and soon we're heading back to the mainland. There was a couple of moments there where I thought I wasn't going to see this deck. Exactly but right. We've done it. We on made it. On we made it. It's, it's, a, it's going to be a little bit more of a rougher journey than I'm used to on so the. See, was angry that day, my friends. Hey, listen. I think we have proved conclusively. It doesn't matter what the weather is doing. You can have an absolute blast on Fraser Island. Absolutely, mate. You got to pack right. Yep. And uh, just have a little bit of sense of adventure. And holy heck, I've had it. I've had an amazing mate, time. I would. I would do it all again just, just to see the seas. Just one thing. What's that? Just one thing. I wish the cyclone was just a bit bigger, because therefore we'd probably have to stay another five we'd, days on the island. We'd still be a kingfisher. I probably would have drunk a I better beer. I would have done the pub crawl. Kingfisher, happy oh, yeah, valley down the Yurong. Not next time. That is a bonzer idea. Not, yeah, Fraser Island time, pub crawl. Folks, you want to come along? If you do, <laughs> well, you know where we'll find us on YouTube. Exactly Absolutely right. Absolutely free. Subscribe. Subscribe. Click that button if you like this stuff to see a lot more of the good stuff. Yep. Boys, what do you think? Good. Yes, okay. yeah, That's good. what I thought. Yeah, good. Folks, you will catch us. You might catch us on Fraser. You might not. But if you don't, we'll catch us next time on... Full Full Action. Action. Yeah, yeah, you will. Experts at it. <laughs> Stick around, because coming up is something you don't want to miss. That's right. I'm talking my favourite part, the four-wheel drive action outtakes. G'day, folks. Hope you enjoyed our Fraser Island adventure. No, Mate, you did. Had a ball. That's Fraser Island. How can you not? Now, look, folks, our vehicles, both of them are kitted out with a whole heap of gear that make our trips around Australia just so much better than they would be if we didn't have that gear. And I'd like to take this opportunity, well we both would, to go through a few of those products and explain what we've got installed on the vehicle. Now, obviously we need UHFs. Now, I've got the Uniden UH9080 installed in my vehicle. And what I love about it is that old bugger lugs here, the best of times, talks like he's got marbles in his mouth. So it makes it so easy to be able to use the replay function on there, so I can hear him again, and it gives me a second chance to understand what he said. <laughs> yeah, mate, just go through that top there now. <laughs> Look, there's a few products I'd like to share as well. Now, obviously the tyres are on my vehicle. I've got the General Grabber X3s. Now, so they're in a size 35 inch. Now, I think I've proven that those things work really well in the mud. You'd expect that out of a mud tyre. And mate, they obviously worked a treat in the sand. I think I've proved that. It didn't get stuck once. So, I think they work well. Oh, more importantly, I don't have to pull you out of there. Now, everyone needs suspension on their four wheel drives. You can't get away without it. You've got to have it. I'm running the Falcon 2 inch kit on the D-Max now. What I really like about that is that we put that in after we put all the accessories in, the drawers in the back, all the other bits and pieces, so it has been created to fit my vehicle. Mm. And over here on the fast beaches, on the eastern side of Fraser Island, where you pick up a bit of speed, it performed absolutely faultlessly. But on the inland tracks, where you're getting a bit of that bumpy, horrible stuff, no problem at all. So, welcome suspension on the old D-Max, working a treat. Mate, look, I think this product goes without saying, you must have it no matter where you go camping in Australia, but especially on a beach. I'm talking about my fridge. I've got yeah, yeah. the Dometic in there. I've got the CF 65 litre. It's a dual zone. What I love about that, 65 litres worth of goodies. So that means I can fit all the beers, all the food, yep. and um, even enough beers for Graham, because he keeps stealing half of my ones. So that's been a real treat on this island. You've got to be able to get beers any way you can, mate. Now, Fraser Island, for those that don't understand, is a sand island. Lots of There's sand. There's lots there. of sand Actually, on Actually, the it. biggest sand island in the world. There you go. Now. A lot of that sand is going to end up in your vehicle. Mine is just about brand new, so having true fit covers on the floor, floor mats inside the vehicle, has meant that every other day I can just pull those out, tip the sand out, and there's no sand inside the vehicle itself. I can put it back. I'm actually growing the island yeah. by putting my sand back. I'm the ultimate conservationist. So those true fit floor mats, absolutely spot on. No, but they're a beaut product. I've actually got them fitted in the 80s as well. Another product I'd like to run through, in fact, there's two products that made life a lot easier over there. I was talking about the fridge before, yep. but to get that fridge out, of course, I've got a drop slide. I'm not the tallest bloke, and neither are you, mate. <laughs> I'm not the news to you, but the old drop down from Clearview, the yeah. easy slide, that makes life so easy. Pull it out, pull it back in. It doesn't matter how heavy that fridge is, it can hold 
100, over 100 kilos, that fridge slide. So fantastic in the back there. And also I've got the clear view towing mirrors. So again, you've got a big rig. I can't see through the back, so I need all the vision I can, mate. Well, rock and roll. Makes life easy. Yep. Well, there you go. There's just a few of the many products we've got fitted to our vehicles that makes life a lot easier out in the bush. And considering we spend, what, seven months of the year yeah, out in the scrub in beautiful places like Fraser and yep. a lot of other places around Australia, we need all the help we can get to make life better off-road. So I want to say a big thanks for watching our Fraser Island adventure. We're going to get out of this cyclone yeah. and get to the next destination. Which is the Rainbow Beach pub. We'll start there <laughs> and we'll figure out the next spot. This is a freshly fallen tree, and I reckon with these winds that we're getting at the moment. Oh, <laughs> far out. <laughs> what was that? Look at this spot. <laughs> what a work with folks. Oh, what a man. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a peanut in my throat. <coughs> Salt and vinegar. <coughs> I like the fact that we get to share camping spaces quite regularly. And really close too, like you would never camp right there. Like <laughs> I'm not gonna use your tent peg to put my swag up. <laughs> you get it all out, get it all out. You're alright. <laughs> <laughs> what sand's made out of specifically on Fraser is every time a Nissan breaks down, another grain of sand's born. Like that. Yeah, oh, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Baby turn. We're on, we're on. Baby turn Anything flammable just move away from the Baby turn it down. What's your shirt? Oh, oh I can smell hair. <laughs> Cook something. Do I have eyebrows? <laughs> Maybe do, we do have eyebrows. You got eyebrows. Okay. Right. How about we turn one down? Yeah, no. So you can imagine an island this big, it's a lot of disappointed Nissan owners. Is that called the circle of life? It's the circle of life. All right, just done. How do I look? Are you back? It's sand everywhere. It's Insta Whale. <laughs> uh, the reality. The reality Instagram is, is, hard work, yeah, it it is hard work, mate. It is very hard work. Chuck a couple of those in the old. Well, they're not actually rings. Shame, shame, that was supposed to be rings. <laughs> yeah. Didn't read the label. Did not read the label. No, nah, they're sliced, they're definitely sliced. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, you can still right, cook mate. them, though, just put them. No, put them that will not work. That'll be a messy no, like a, It'll be burgers and pineapple and <laughs> yeah. that'll be horrible. It'll be good. Keep, mate. All right, mate, well, I'm not gonna hang around. I'll uh, catch you at the other end. <laughs> Jokes, I'm gonna go pick up the camera crew. Fraser Island was basically big sand island. Oh, mate. Yeah, I know, it wasn't the best one I've ever done. The rainforest area is amazing. It reminds me a lot like Southwest WA. All the curry trees everywhere. <laughs> I just can't do it. Sorry, Dawes. I can't do it. <laughs> it's just... Ladies, this is Shuey. He's single and he's looking to mingle. Give him a buzz. <laughs> it's pretty lush, Sambo. Mate, I was just about to say, lushness could only be described as as lush as your hair if you had any, but, uh, mate, it's beautiful. This is the final in car for the Fraser Island adventure. You guys have been great. Yubada yubada. That's all, folks. When he's calling for you. Listen, listen to your heart. Listen to my fart. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there you go. <laughs> That's that. <laughs>